Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us again. I really hope you enjoyed last month's tutorial on how to draw plum blossoms. Today, we're going to be looking into peonies, which is one of my favorite flowers. Peonies represent good fortune, and I wanted to illustrate peonies for the good fortune that we hope for this year. This year is also about setting intentions, and I wanted to use a peony illustration to show you how I stay organized and keep on track for this year. Let's get started. Before I start on my project, I like to do some quick sketches just to get a feel for what I'm doing and just to warm my hand up. So for today, we're going to be drawing some peonies, which are my favorite flowers. And we're going to just start with some simple patterns. Peonies have different shaped petals and we're just going to continue this shape over um, repetitively for the pattern. So I'm going to shape it out. And it's taking something really complex like the flower and breaking it down into simple shapes. Now I'm going to repeat this pattern that I did originally over and over again throughout the entire piece and it's going to come together to give us the peony flower. Okay. And don't worry about each shape being a different size because in nature, the flower varies in size anyway, so it's never a true, like, perfect geometric uh, shape. They do have like some randomness to it, so don't worry about making every petal the same exact size. So I really like how that looks. I'm going to outline it with a marker just so I get a better outline of what I did with pencil. And again, this is just a simple shape that has been repeated numerous times. So I'm kind of doing like a little like mountain shape, you know, with just like some swirls here over and over again around the original, like what I did in pencil. And here we have a simple shape for a peony flower. And I'll also get com comfortable without using a pencil. You know, so if I feel like adding more petals, I can go ahead and do that. So I really like how that shape looks. I also really love this gold paint pen, which I will be using throughout the series. I just really love how gold this is, and it adds a nice pop to all of the flowers. Okay. So I think that you can do some outer embellishments too. All right, so I'm feeling really confident about this shape. What I'm gonna do is move on to black paper. Um, I really think that the peonies will stand out with the black paper. And today I'm only going to use a white paint pen and a gold paint pen. I'm only gonna use these two pens for this piece. What I really like to do is to keep things really simple. I think that if you give yourselves too many options to work with, you start to feel overwhelmed with what you're trying to do. I think if you give yourself some restrictions in what you're using, um, it'll actually give you more freedom to work with what you have. So I'm just going to copy the pattern that I did earlier in my sketchbook and draw it over and over again. So. And I really love how white shows up on black paper. It's such a nice, pretty contrast. 
kind of reminds me of snow, uh, perfect for the winter time. Oh yeah, so I am just drawing the same shape over and over again. And don't worry about being perfect with the lines. It honestly won't show up too much and only you're gonna know it, not everyone else. So, and don't worry about, you know, each petal being perfectly sized either. They don't have to be identical with each other. And you can make it as big or as small as you want it. It's totally up to you. So I think I'm going to stop here with this one and I'm going to continue this pattern again um, maybe a different size or same size, who knows. Um, I tend to not really know what the final is going to look like and kind of just draw whatever I feel like at the time. Don't worry about each petal looking the same because in nature each petal does not look the same. They grow out you know and bloom in various directions and that's what you're trying to capture. And I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast to what I currently have. So I'm just going to make a simple shape, which is like a teardrop shape. So I'm going to color it in and I'm going to draw the same shape over and over again. And don't worry about them being the same size either. So I think it just adds a really nice contrast to what I currently have. And then let's just add more teardrops to this. Each teardrop shape is random. I did not plan this out. It's just, I'm drawing as I feel. I was really inspired by the petals on the chrysanthemum flower. So I just wanted to add this into my peony flower just to give my peony flower some company. Right. Again, simple shapes, just repeat it over and over again. I'm going to continue with the teardrop shape here. And don't worry about each teardrop looking the same. They're all supposed to be slightly different. So I think I'm at a good point where I wanna add just different embellishments where it's just a simple circle like a simple dot. And I really think this adds a nice touch to connecting everything together. Also, it reminds me of little snowflakes. And whenever we see little dots, it feels like a celebration of something. And we're celebrating the new year. We're celebrating new habits. So I'm finishing this up by adding a bunch of circles and dots around the piece just to tie it together. It reminds me of snowflakes for the winter and also it adds more of a celebration aspect to the piece. Um, you know, we're celebrating the new year, we're celebrating new habits, we're also celebrating a renewal and celebrating hope, you know, for a better year. So this is my interpretation of what these dots mean. I'm also going to go in with the gold, which is my favorite gold. It's so light fast, which means the gold really picks up and it's just going to make the flowers pop a lot more. Simple shapes repetitively, you know, really can bring a piece together. So now my peonies are looking 
more like flowers. And again, these are all very random. Random dots that I'm, let's put it out here. I'm going to finish this up. In the meantime, let's take a look at the Raphael room at the Gardner Museum. The wall textiles in that room is just absolutely gorgeous and I'm so inspired by it and which has also influenced a lot of my floral patterns that I'm designing with you here. With the start of the new year, I'm thinking a lot about themes of repair, rebirth, and renewal. I'm reminded of this room, which is the Raphael Room, one of my favorite spaces at the Gardner Museum. The room recently went through a period of restoration and renewal of its own, a project that recaptured the gallery's original splendor. I'm reminded that we also need to make caring for ourselves a priority in order to live long and healthy and vibrant lives. The room is bright and vibrant and full of wonderful floral patterns and I'm glad I can share it with you. Let's head back to the studio to finish up the composition. Welcome back. I am just finishing up the final touches for this piece. I am making small dots and big dots throughout the composition and they're all randomly placed too but I feel like this gives the flowers some background to sit on so that they're not just floating in the piece. And they also feel like snowflakes and a celebration of these flowers. So I'm really excited with how this came together and I think I'm going to stop right here. After I finish a piece, I always wonder what to do with it next. What are some applications? And because it's January, we are looking into the new year. We are assessing what new habits that we can develop for the year and how we can improve the year. I'm going to use this pattern for my weekly planning. I feel like this is a fun design to add to my weekly organization. I'm going to show you my weekly spread on how I keep organized for the week. So here I created a weekly spread Monday through Saturday and this gives me a really nice overview of what to look forward to for the week. And I really love that I've added the floral pattern that we've, that we've created together around it. So it adds a nice touch to the week. And this, really help, and this really helps with planning. And I plan on doing this for every week this year to help me stay organized. I like to give myself helpful reminders to help me stay organized, but also little notes to make sure that I am taking care of myself too. So this is a really big one for me and I hope that you guys can all do the same. In addition to my weekly spread, I also have a daily habit tracker that I have designed to help me stay accountable for each day. I have a lot of projects that I need to manage and I also have a lot of ideas and a lot of things to do that are just jumbling in my head. And this is the perfect way for me to stay accountable and to stay organized with all of my projects. Through my weekly spread and through my daily habit tracker, it really does help keep me accountable. And this year, we're all about setting intentions and setting the tone for the year. And I really hope that you get some ideas into how you can develop these daily habits into your lives. Thank you so much for spending time with me to learn how to draw peonies and also to set intentions and to create your own weekly spreads. Let's stay connected. Please visit me at brainalow.com or on Instagram at brainalow. Also, I'd love to check out your work. Please tag us at Gardner Museum. We'll see you next month.